I'm Isabella and this tutorial is on the Xtrace debugging tool in ActiveHDL. The Xtrace debugging tool allows users to detect and get reports on information with unknown values, such as an X, a U, or a don't care. This tutorial will go over how to enable the Xtrace debugging tool, the different Xtrace options, and how to view signals that contain unknown values, either through the HDL source code or utilizing the advanced data flow debugging tool. We're actually going to start by opening up one of the pre-made examples in ActiveHDL. To find them, go to Help, Open Example, and we want to use the Verilog Blackjack design. Once that's open, it's very important to make sure the Xtrace debugging tool and general debugging settings are enabled. So we need to go into Design, Settings, and under Compilation, you'll see a VHDL and Verilog tab where both of them have an Enable Debug button. Depending on whatever language you have in your design browser, you want to enable either one or both of them. Since we have only Verilog code in our design, I'm just enabling debug for that Verilog. Hit apply and move on to the simulation tab. In the simulation tab, we want to enable Xtrace and generate data for advanced data flow, since we'll be using both of those debugging tools. Hit apply and now OK. Now we can compile this pre-made design, and it should give us a green compilation success that we see here. Then initialize the simulation. Once we initialize the simulation, you can finally open the Xtrace debugging tool. And there's two ways we can do it. You can either go into the simulation tab, down to Xtrace, and turn it on. Or in your design browser, just right click the top level design, go down to Xtrace, and turn it on. Turning it on gives you this pop-up where the first thing here shows you the top level that we're actually making all these extra settings for. Under that, in the settings box, we have different ways to specify what's being traced. We can pause whenever we have a trace. We could specify if we want only certain unknowns to be traced. We could give a stop condition or specify which, one, which unknown values we do not want reported. Anything traced will automatically be displayed in the console below. So the settings down here are specifying how we want those messages to be shown. If we check verbose xtrace signals, then it's going to show us every, X, every signal that's being xtraced. We can also disable the signal so nothing in the console is shown and it will only show up in the report. Next to that, we have this cross probing. Normally it starts unchecked, so, if you, so you want to check it. And this will decide how we view the unknown values, either with advanced data flow or HDL source code. And finally, we have the format options here. This is how we can format the reports as either a text file or an HTML file and specify the location of that. So let's make sure we have HDL source code clicked and hit OK. Then in the console down here, I'll tell you how many signals were traced. If we run the simulation, in the console here, it will show us what signals were found as unknowns while Xtrace was running. So here it will show us during the Xtrace at this specific time, this specific signal had this unknown value. And then if you double click it, since we checked HDL code in the cross probing, it will open up the HDL source file and point with this red arrow to the exact line that caused the unknown value. If we ever want to stop the Xtrace, you could right click turn it, and go down to Xtrace and turn it off. And then you could again right click turn back on. Doing so actually continues the simulation though. So if you run it, now you see three different unknown values. And if we double click this, it will open up a new um, HDL file for that value. So the best way is to actually stop the simulation and then reinitialize it. So that way we can switch the cross probing to advanced data flow. And now we can actually have it start over and look at those same three values in the advanced data flow setting. Here we can also see when we check verbose, as I said earlier, it actually shows you every single design or every single um, signal that's being traced instead of just a number being traced. Now, if we run this one, we see that's the same three signals that we saw in the beginning. And if we double click these, it'll show up in the advanced data flow window. 
It will highlight whichever one we've selected in red here so you know which wire you're looking at. And if you right click that wire and then go to X-Way, we can actually follow this signal and see where that unknown value originated from. So following it, we can actually see that it originated right here, but it didn't become an issue until this module here where the X and the 1 were put together and became that unknown value. So we could see that the X value, the unknown value, actually came from the beginning, but it wasn't an issue until right here. And again, whenever we want to switch between the two, it's always best to stop the simulation, restart, and turn it on. But if you want to just stop the simulation at any time, that will automatically stop the X-Trace debugging tool, so you won't be able to keep looking through the signals and see what's an unknown. And that concludes this tutorial on the X-Trace debugging tool. Thank you for watching.